Happy Halloween, everyone. Nice costume. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, my, my wife put me up to it. <laughs> How y'all doing? The temperatures start dropping there, uh, David? Uh, we reached freezing today. Uh, so we were at uh, 32, zero Celsius. And yeah, it's starting to get a little frosty. Um, it's up to a balmy 38 degrees Fahrenheit right now. Yeah, how about, uh, how about Texas? Uh, we've been bouncing around between the 40s and the 80s. South Texas. Yeah. It's 46, <laughs> right? Now. It's going to be in the 80s later this week. So. Jeez. That's uh, quite a swing. Yeah. All right. We'll get started at like five past the hour. Um, Anybody you'd like to moderate today or any volunteers for note taking? I am happy to moderate. Um, and we can we could have a group effort, effort taking notes if nobody wants to sign up specifically. I, mean, I, I don't mind doing it, but I also don't have the power. So you'd have to go accept everything that I do. So. Also, I love your costume. Yeah. I missed that at the beginning because I was here and just ex thought silence was happening and realized my output was set to the wrong thing. So I missed <laughs> if someone already called that out. Thanks, Taylor. Um, yeah, I'll I'll take uh I'll take notes while folks talk. All right. Uh for anybody that does not have the doc. Throw it in chat. Um, okay, we have reached that time. So hello, everybody. Welcome to the WASM Working Group. Um, my name is David Justice. This is a CNCF uh, tag runtime group. Um, we abide by the CNCF code of conduct. So uh, everybody, let's be nice to each other. And I uh, wish everybody a very happy uh, Halloween. Um, if if y'all are celebrating in any way, it uh, should be fun. Hopefully it's a safe one for everybody. Um, and uh, today we have a relatively short agenda. We have two items to cover today. Um, I don't know if there's any, anybody want to say hello? Anybody new that would like to introduce themselves? Going once, going twice, and the gavel falls. All right. Um, any PSAs that anybody would like to bring up? All right. I don't have any. Um, so let's just uh, continue to uh, the agenda. I think most of my stuff okay. will be in the component model overview because anything that's new and exciting. Um, so yeah, that'll be, we can do that. And we've been doing a little bit of the anything else people have heard about in WebAssembly thing anyway. So we can talk about that too at the end. Cool, 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 cool. All right, let's jump in. Um, our first agenda item today is a project called Run Wassy. Um, Jorge, uh, 
do you want to do you want to do it? I I'm happy to if you don't want to, uh, but I don't want to put you on the spot. I I didn't prepare anything. I wasn't aware that we were talking about this today. Sorry. No worries. But, uh, I'm happy to okay. uh, comment on things. All right. Uh, how about I go through an overview, um, and then please fill in where you'd like, and let's uh, let's chat from there. All right, so let me add a link to the notes here so everybody can jump out to it. All right, so RunWazy is a container D project that uh, was started. When did we start that? Um, I, I don't want to go back through, but probably like, I don't know, uh, eight months ago or something like that. Um, and basically what uh, RunWazzy does is RunWazzy provides um, a set of Containerd shims and Containerd primitives that allow you to run WebAssembly uh, as containers, uh, container workloads. So uh, anywhere that uh, Containerd is running, um, you can take RunWazzy uh, Containerd shims and you can enable that environment to run WebAssembly. Um, now, you may ask why, right? Um, so you, you could end up building a Docker container, embedding your run uh, your runtime of choice into that Docker container, and then starting that Docker container and starting your, your WebAssembly uh, component or module uh, using that runtime. Um, but what you end up having to do is you end up packing all of your bits for your runtime. You end up packing all of your, your WebAssembly module components. Um, and then, you know, that it starts to, starts to get a little heavier. So what we want to do is create a way for running WebAssembly uh, without having to pack your runtime. So it just is already there for you. So you could make much smaller uh, images. Um, these smaller images are can be you know really tiny, like you're talking like two megs or you know maybe a little bit bigger than that. Um, and so when we think about that in uh, comparison to native uh, native containers, um, so native Linux containers, for example, you could start with like a scratch container and have like a, a native binary that kicks off, and those are really small. But a lot of times we end up seeing much larger containers, uh, container images. So you'll see, you know, maybe .NET or, you know, Python or some, some other very common languages where you end up having to pack a lot of stuff into that container image to execute uh, uh, your application. So in RunWazy, uh, we wanted to, we wanted to enable you to make really, really tiny images and have WebAssembly at your fingertips. Uh, and then, you know, aside from that, there have been other projects out there that have enabled WebAssembly to run in Kubernetes. Um, one such project, Crosslet, um, uses the uh, Kubelet interface and implements a Kubelet interface to run WebAssembly uh, components and modules. Um, and this works out really well. However, uh, it, it's a much larger interface to implement. And so with the container D uh, interface, uh, shim interface, we are able to take advantage of a lot of the stuff that container D does really well, like pulling images, um, you know, dealing with uh, the OCI spec, um, a lot of stuff that like basically the, the shim API is uh, basically a, a task. So it's like task create, task start, and then wait for the task to run. And then stop. So it really has a very thin interface uh, for executing tasks, uh, uh, executing you know any process. And this kind of fit the model that we were looking for. Um, so why would you want to run run WASI or run shims in general? Well, this provides you the ability to run uh, WebAssembly modules side by side with. Uh, native containers within a pod. So RunWazzy uh, relies on uh, Yuki uh, library to allow us to have different types of executors. And these different types of executors, uh, 
maybe I should go a step further back. So in Kubernetes, um, let me see if I can find a, a good uh, representation real quick. I should have come with this already, but uh, I did not. Um, sorry. Here we go. I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully this works well. All right. All right, can everybody see my screen? I'm going to go with, uh, that's a yes. Are you seeing deploy.yaml? Okay, awesome. So what we see here is a Kubernetes uh, deployment. Uh, and first here, you're going to see a runtime class. This runtime class uh, tells Kubernetes um, what it is, a, a special way to run a uh, workload. So um, when Kubernetes uh, sees something coming with this runtime class, it's going to then tell container D, hey, the handler for this is named, you know, whatever. In this case, WASM. So um, that ends up mapping to the container D runtime that gets executed. So instead of, say, run C, we're going to then go hand off to whatever we've configured to be named WASM in the containerd configuration. Uh, so in this case, uh, this runtime class uh, translates to run was WASM and ends up, it's not exactly the most clear, but it actually translates over to WASM time. So uh, as we look at the deployment here, we see that we have a regular deployment, uh, looks just like any app you've probably ever made. And uh, is the spec for uh, the pod uh, has a runtime class in it. And we've used that same WASM runtime class here. So that instructs uh, container D when it receives it to map it to the handler for WASM. And then these containers run uh, within the same pod next to each other. If you notice, you'll see WASI demo app. This is a uh, container image that uh, contains a WebAssembly module. Um, and then Nginx is our good old Nginx that uh, runs a native uh, container image. So these two are able to play nicely together, to run within the same pod, share the same networking namespace, and uh, be able to communicate with each other. This enables uh, some really fun stories. Uh, you know, for example, you know, running a service mesh. Uh, where you would like to, you know, augment uh, your container with another container that's going to route traffic for you. Um, this allows us to run WebAssembly and native containers side by side, um, which is which is unlocks a lot of really fun stuff. Um, so let's see. So run WASI consists of several crates. Um, as you can see, there's multiple runtimes within here. We have WASM time, WASMer, uh, WASM edge, and then some base uh, crates that we use. Um, so for example, shim WASM ends up doing some uh, base work for each one of these uh, runtimes. Uh, and to deploy a container D shim, you basically just have to take the binary uh, for your particular platform drop it onto your node in the bin path, and then uh, register it with container D using the container D config. This is, uh, this is pretty much all you have to do. And then you apply the runtime classes and you can apply your deployments just like normal. Uh, makes WebAssembly, you know, kind of bridges that gap between, you know, Kubernetes and WebAssembly. Uh, let's see. I'm going to stop sharing. Um, this project has also helped us to build uh, another project. 
uh, called the Container DYs Machines. Uh, and you can find that project here. I'll put it in chat. I'll also drop it into the docs. So this project takes a slightly more higher level approach um, and uses uh, more opinionated uh, you know, run app environments. Uh, so most of them are based on uh, WASM time as the runtime, but then provide a higher level uh, application abstractions. So uh, perhaps other interfaces that are implemented by the host to provide uh, more functionality. So you'll see like Spin, the WASI worker server, and Lunatic. Um, these, I think with the component model talk that we're gonna have after this, um, we'll, we'll start to see how these interfaces can become a little bit more useful and start talking about uh, component interface definitions. Um, yeah. So any questions about run WASI about how it works? Um, I mean, I, I get how I get how it works. Oh, sorry, who did I interrupt? I didn't mean to interrupt. Was that you? Uh, no, I was gonna uh, just okay. actually I, I didn't give uh, Jorge a chance to uh, add, please. Yeah, no, I, thank you, David, for the introduction. I think uh, it's um, a very good description of run WASI. Uh, I, I would just add um, some uh, minor things. Um, one of the ideas of uh, having um, not including your runtime and making this an WebAssembly specific image is that it would be the. I'm not sure it is at the moment, but the the goal is to make this uh, really uh, you can run anywhere, anywhere. Uh, so the same image you can run it on uh, x86 or our Windows uh, with our on ARM or RIS-5 or any architecture you want. Um, so that, uh, if you if you are bundling your runtime, that's going to be uh, an executable that's platform dependent and it's architecture, architecture dependent. So with uh, WebAssembly, all the promise of write, one, uh, write once and run anywhere, uh, we want to achieve that as well. Um, um, the other thing uh, I wanted to measure is that uh, we are already uh, uh, specifically, uh, there's James uh, from the project that's uh, putting a lot of effort into running uh, WebAssembly containers natively on Windows. Uh, so uh, you can run uh, WebAssembly images in Windows without requiring uh, the system for Linux or a VM or anything like that. Um, so that I, I, that's something that I'm really excited about. Uh, it would remove a, a lot of unnecessary overhead and also what it provides is you're running a WebAssembly sandbox inside of a container. So you have two layers of security for the code that you're running. So even if you escape your WebAssembly sandbox, you are still into a container sandbox and and you you, you will have to escape those two layers to get, gain access to a host. Um, I think that's those are the main things that uh, I wanted to uh, stress. Thank you for bringing up the arch architectural independence. <clears throat> that, that's actually quite key and, and something that uh, I, I was remiss in not mentioning. Uh, this also gets down to your container images too. So when we start talking about architectural independence, when you start thinking about container images, every container image you, you make is uh, has an architecture and OS that was targeting, right? So um, you have your platform, your, your platform that it targets. Uh, well, you wanna be able to make images that are not platform dependent. So you can pull them anywhere and then lay them out and execute them uh, independently. And this is uh, part of the work that's going on around uh, Run WASI as well. Uh, so figuring out uh, and, and working with the community to define images and how we structure images so that we can execute apps um, architecturally in OS independent ways. Uh, so that, yeah, I think that's going to be really nice if you can go and deploy out to Kubernetes or anywhere else and not really worry about like where you're landing. As long as you have uh, the shim, the runtime available to you, 
you now are able to execute across uh, a heterogeneous fleet of computers, which is, I, I think, pretty cool. Um, yeah. Uh, now, I will step down off the podium and please, uh, anybody have any questions? Yes, I have two um, I, that I was thinking of. Oh, Luke, Luke, go ahead. You can go. I, I can be patient. Sure. Um, one, one was just about just basic plumbing in the deploy.yaml that, that when you're screen sharing, maybe if you pulled it up, I could ask like a question just about a particular line number. I would be delighted to. Thank you. All right. So I believe, oop, not that. Let's share something else. How about this? Yay. OK, so let me jump back to that real quick. And yeah, this is the interface uh, that I was talking about for uh, the chim. So basically, new, start, kill, delete, wait. So very much task-oriented. Um, the deploy YAML is right here. Cool. So what I was just checking an assumption is, is it that line four binds the name WASM, and that is what is referred to by line 23? And that is Indeed. independent of line five, which happens yes, to also say uh, WASM, but it seemed like that's what punches down and says, this is the container D shim. Is that right? I, I, I can answer that. <laughs> that line five then links to another configuration, that, because this mm -hmm. deployment.yaml is what we use for test. And it's, uh, as David mentioned, it's not very a very good name. It's just WASM, and that goes to WASM time. But uh, in the tests, we link WASM to a different runtime for, for each test, right? So we test this with WASM time, with cool. WASM and WASM edge. So we link that WASM handle to uh, different runtimes, depending on the case. OK, yeah, yeah. so line five indexes exact. into a, like a, a static set of container D shims that have been like kind of built in those are kind of built into the native platform. Whereas line four could be anything you call it foo. And as long as line 23 was changed to match, that would be fine. Indeed, that is exactly right. Cool. Uh, and I think I have a better uh, illustration of this. Uh, let's go out here to... Yeah, the, the deployment here is, is nicer because it includes all the runtimes. So here we can see runtime classes for Slight, Spin, WSS, and Lunatic. And we can see the, the metadata name uh, for the runtime class. Uh, we you know, specify these uh, appropriately. Mm -hmm. And then the handler ends up getting tied to the container deconfig uh, Got it. to then point to the proper shim to execute. Um, and then in the workload YAML, you can see we're using the uh, runtime class name. Great. And I was, when I read the AKS docs for using WASI preview one before, there's no explicit creation of the runtime class. So is the idea that like in a managed setting, the runtime classes are like automatically kind of provided to you. And then you, you just, you refer to them with your workloads. That is a really fantastic question. And that is where KWASM comes into play. So uh, KWASM, uh, what we're, what we've been working on in KWASM, well, really, uh, mostly, uh, Sven and, uh, Crystal, uh, Liquid Reply have been working on KWASM and KWASM is meant to be an operator that you can run within your cluster that you could tell it, uh, it's it basically a life cycle, uh, manager for shims. Uh, container D shims. And so uh, what KWASM does is, uh, what it, it's going to do is it has a CRD, a, a custom resource definition that describes a shim, uh, where you could fetch it, uh, how it should be installed, and then the runtime class name that you would like it to have, uh, as well as I think handler name as well. Uh, so uh, say you apply a CRD that describes that shim and installation and maybe some labels for nodes that you want it to deploy to. That would then take that, run a job on each of those nodes to install that shim, and then it would apply a runtime class, handler config uh, for it, so that all of that is, is taken care of for a Kubernetes user. Um, that, that is going to be, 
That, that's kind of like that finishing touch. And what we did in AKS is we pre-baked images with uh, you know, these shims already installed in the path. And then uh, we did the mutations to the container dconfig and then applied the runtime classes for the user. Really what we'd like to do is have a, a way that anybody can do it outside. Like it, it, we don't want it behind the wall. We want to put this out into the community so that anybody can can do this stuff. So if you're a cluster operator using managed Kubernetes, you have these two separate axes. You can control your set of runtime classes, uh, you know, your your native your the shims that are like the native code, and then orthogonally you can you know deploy your different WASM workloads. And the key that links them together is the string, this runtime class string, and that's kWASM helps you with the former. And then yeah, that's yeah that's that's nice. It was a really pretty uh, generalized uh, architecture. I think it'll be really neat when we, when all the pieces start to come together. <laughs> Thanks for your questions. Thank yeah. You. So, uh, David, my follow-up question, I have a follow-up question that was actually one of my original questions I had to ask. Uh, I would had listed the wrote down as we were, you were talking. Um, so like, I, I was just wondering, this is the, uh, I've operated far too many Kubernetes things coming out of me right now. Um, how do you, uh, how does someone who, like, let's say you have a user who's, who's interested in trying out WebAssembly with Kubernetes and how do they get to like configure their kubelet? And so it sounds like KWASM goes that direction, but it still sounds like you need an admin to be able to like install that, who has the permissions to do the, uh, to do all those things. Is there, is there any future here where you don't have to be an admin to configure this and try and, and try these things out? um within like a cluster interesting um i hadn't thought about it too much do you, do you have any ideas on how you'd like I, to see that work i i don't know how like technologically speaking i can't think of one right now that's why i was asking um i would think i'm just thinking of having worked with a bunch of, of people that deployed you know aks clusters when i was at microsoft or working with other companies that have it they're they're actually fairly locked down and the thing that most yep. people have access to are like a namespace. They don't have access to like go install a controller that can install runtime classes that can do things like that. And so I was just curious if there was any thinking being done there, because I know that there's many people who will want to try or even teams, you know, as WebAssembly continues to grow. And and I, I want to I just was curious if there were any options there. And if it's not like we, this is all new. This isn't like a criticism. This is just more like I'm curious if there's any thinking there, um, because I know it's a common thing for people to run into. Um, out in the wild. Uh, would they have access to a privileged container? Possibly, it just depends. Like I said, it's 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 yeah. varied depending on on where you're at. Yeah, I I hear you. Um, huh. That's a tough one because you know to make this work with container D, we have to get the bins onto the machine, and generally the machine is probably the most locked down. Uh, you know, you, you'd be able to run container workloads, but not necessarily mutate a uh, machine. Um, I think and, and it's not something that needs an answer now if there isn't one. I just was thinking through it as, as I was uh, listening to like how it worked and everything that um, made me kind of think through that question. So it's okay. Like we could, if you have an answer, we can talk about it in the channel and Slack later. I just was, just was curious on that one. I would love to discuss it more because I, I think that would be really useful. Um, like you said, uh, a lot of folks just don't have that level of access. So how do you kick the tires? Like, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is you could go bake a native uh, container image and you'd be okay doing that. Um, but you don't get the, you wouldn't have the same kind of uh, uh, ergonomics, if you will. And I understand that, like having written Crestlet, I I get like this requires like that's the binary you're running on your node to join it. That's kind of like a very admin level operation. So anyway, uh, that was my that was the first question. I had another one. If if you're okay to maybe we can discuss that more later. The other one, I, the yeah. okay. So the other one I had is I, I I always like to ask this question of when should someone use something like Renwazi in the container D shims versus when they should just use the runtimes themselves? I mean, there's the obvious answer of, well, if you're in Kubernetes, I get that. But is there is there anything else that like you have like advice when people come in and say that since we're using these as kind of like the discovery mechanism for people? 
when should you versus uh, versus using a runtime packed into an image itself? Like any of those runtimes packed into images, runtimes on their own, um, like joining it in through another, like if you have another mechanism, or you know, like running some things of like you could run, you could technically run some like runtime things in a container over here and have something running not in the runtime containers. I'm just curious, like what what your kind of thought is coming from this from this side of the the wasm. Um, work that's going on like when should someone use it when should someone not use it like i said there's the obvious one if, if you're in kubernetes sure makes sense but like beyond that there's i'm just curious if there's any other use cases you you've thought of or or, or ideas you oh, have like oh, when you should or shouldn't interesting or if it should um, never be used outside or if it's primarily kubernetes and nothing else like i, I i'm just do this is the i'm trying to play the the dumb asking i don't know have context like i yeah. think i have answers but i'm just trying to make sure we have recorded this for posterity so people know like if they come <laughs> watch it like hey oh that's why this this or this is when you should use it like that was kind of the idea when we started scheduling these like overviews of of uh cncf wasm projects awesome um actually i think this comes into a really great uh example of how docker's using it uh all right. Do you want to talk a little bit about how Docker uh, uses uh, the runtime classes? Yeah, sure. Um, so Docker uh, is using container D as a runtime. And the idea is that uh, we can piggyback on all the same mechanisms that are used by uh, Kubernetes, right? So uh, that's uh, why we are participating in this project. Uh, if you go to, uh, if you use Docker desktop, for instance, um, that it lets you run Docker on Windows or Mac or whatever, uh, you can uh, go and enable a setting that lets you uh, install all the, the runtimes for you, uh, or at, at least the, the run WASI runtimes and the container the uh, WASM shims runtimes. And the idea is that then uh, you can publish an image and, and you can take advantage of this uh, architecture independence, right? You can run the same image anywhere and it's independent of runtime and uh, modulo runtimes being compatible. So if, for instance, if you have something that runs in RunWASI, you, you're very likely to, that it's going to run in, in WASMH as well. So yeah, you can run it in whichever runtime you prefer. Um, like, of course, if you have something that's running on spin, then uh, you probably cannot run that in, in, in something that uh, in, in Lunatic, for instance. Uh, but yeah, the idea is that your image is as uh, independent as possible from the, the run environment. So then you can go and, and choose the runtime that you want and, and run it wherever you want. And it gives you much more independence and, the, and doesn't tie the image uh, to a particular uh, uh, runtime or, or a particular uh, architecture. Um, also, uh, as David mentioned before, the images that you generate, if you are not bundling the runtime, are much, more, much smaller and that makes them much more easy to distribute. Um, it reduces bandwidth consumption and well, all the benefits of having smaller images. Um, I don't know if you had any other thing in mind, David or Taylor. I think there's one other aspect to that. I mean, I'd, I'd like to hear Taylor's ideas about other places where this is applicable. It sounded like you had some had some thoughts on that. Um, distribution. So there's already a bunch of like um, everybody uses OCI uh, registries, right? So piggybacking on container D and distributing through OCI is, you know, a pretty well-known channel at this point that mo most folks already have infrastructure running that. So uh, in those cases, I, I think that that lends itself well to what is already deployed. Um, and so folks can use stuff they already, they're already used to using and have a, a similar experience. Luke? I was wondering, um, let's say I want to develop a component and like I kind of don't care the specific runtime I'm using. I just care that it faithfully implements, let's say, some WASI standardized world, say WASI HP proxy or WASI cloud core. Would it be wacky or is this the totally wrong place to stuff it to say WASI colon HP proxy is the runtime class and then the operator of the cluster by choosing which particular implementation grabs the name WASIHP proxy, they get to choose, okay, this is how I would, would like to implement WASIHP proxy in this cluster. So, but the string, the runtime class that is um, 
that I use is, is WASH proxy, or is that maybe not the right place? That's, you know, we're in the deployment world. That doesn't make sense. Maybe that's more of a something that goes in like somewhere else. All right, I think I have an answer to that. And um, also uh, something where if you want to contribute, uh, I'm more happy to listen to ideas, but um, we're moving. Um, so the way we've been using OCI uh, until now is we're putting a WebAssembly module in the rootFS, and that's not great for a number of reasons. And we are trying to move away from that. So um, from now on, uh, the idea is that we're going to start looking at the platform that you define for your image. So if you say, uh, of course, your architecture is going to be WASM32, uh, maybe in the future it's WASM64, and also uh, then that's architecture, but then you have an OS field, and that OS would be, uh, Currently, uh, we are thinking it would be WASI Preview 1 or WASI Preview 2. And then there's also more fields in that platform. Uh, and one of them, for instance, are uh, features that your OS can, uh, needs to have. And what we, one of the uh, proposed things uh, that we were thinking is uh, we could use that feature to enumerate the number uh, of worlds or components that you need to have. So. Um, you are uh, WASI, uh, we are WASM32, WASI Preview 2, and then uh, you need a, a CLI world uh, as a feature of your runtime. Um, you wouldn't be specifying that on the deployment of, of your Kubernetes. That would be uh, something that's specified on the image that's, that you want to run. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to run an image in a in, in in an environment that doesn't have a runtime that provides all those things, uh, then you wouldn't be able to allocate it to any runtime. But, um, that that's what we have in mind, but that's uh, very fresh off the oven, and I, it's still evolving. And we are more than open to listen to suggestions or ideas. Yeah, well, that's probably a whole own discussion topic of its own. Yeah. So maybe I won't <laughs> go. <laughs> that is that is a can of worms because I definitely want it. Like I want to have that conversation too. Far I've been thinking about the, um, a lot of the how what role OCI plays in this, especially because unfortunately I'm also a maintainer of the Rust OCI crate. So yeah, woohoo. Uh, <laughs> and um, uh, but like I I'm I'm curious on the thoughts there because I've had some similar ideas and I'd like to maybe on the side just kind of reconcile where where we're both thinking out there. But yeah, I, that is a very big can of worms. I am not going to continue any further opening um, right now. <laughs> I'm sure James has something to say because he has been uh, the main driver of all a lot of these changes. James yes. or Waldo <laughs> <laughs> or Adla Adla is the uh... Uh, his arch nemesis. So um, no, so I think th one of the other conversations was around um, using features in the OS and the things in the image and um, container D would be able to select the runtime based off of that information um, that that's provided inside the image. So it's, it's similar to along what you're, you're what uh, Jorge and Luke were just mentioning, but right now container D doesn't do that type of thing, but there is some, want inside the container D community to to make that kind of decision based off the OS uh, image. Um, and so, yeah, so definitely. And I think, Luke, the, the way that you described it, I think, uh, you know, an operator like of a Kubernetes cluster could absolutely do kind of what you were describing um, if if that's how they wanted to design it. Um, but I but I think if we push it lower into the stack, it might even be uh, a little bit simpler for for folks to, to design that type of thing. So. All right, um, I think that is a great discussion topic. Uh, we should put it on the calendar and we should definitely talk about it. But we are at time check, I think. And in fact, I am remiss because I've let us go over. Um, sorry, I, I love this conversation. Uh, how about we uh, transition over to component model if, if folks are interested? I mean, I sure hope right. people are interested. That's where we're all going, hopefully. So anyway. Um, I'm just hanging this out just to start to give some context, but I really want anyone who's been involved in this to kind of have the um, ability to like add some additional information here. I feel like the the worst person to do this right now because Luke and Bailey are both here, but I'm going to sure do do my bestest. Um, and so uh, I just wanted to do this. Um, I suggested this topic uh, like about a month ago because I figured going into KubeCon next week, I wanted all of us to get kind of like 
a shared context around where components are at, where preview two is at, like how things are going. So people can understand that. And when people come and ask us at our booths at the, at KubeCon, we can give good answers and not give answers that are like, uh, like slightly off or slightly, like, I, I want to make sure like us as a community can be answering this really well because people are going to have questions. So um, I just wanted to share, I'm going to link this and then share my screen real quick. Um, there is a roadmap that uh, Bailey has been driving for a long time. I think there's going to be updated one soon with the rest of the Bytecode Alliance. Um, Bailey wrote the post. That's why it's on there. And um, I will go ahead and pull that up. I can share just the tab. Well, I guess that's what we're going to do. So anyway, um, this is the like road. There's a, there's a video that shows the whole roadmap. And there's this idea of like a three-tiered roadmap that's going on here. We have stuff that's going on in Core Wasm. Um, and then there's the component model itself. And you'll see like that this is, because this is a couple months old, you can see that things are going along like component naming and versioning exists if you've been following along our resource and handle types. Um, and then we have these like core WASI interfaces. Now, one of the things that um, they're voting on to make official, but I think is, is fairly well received is renaming WASI from WebAssembly standard interface to, to um, all right, WebAssembly system interfaces to st uh, WebAssembly standard interfaces. They're going to have an official vote on that in the in the um, steering uh, steering group or whatever the committee um, this week. But that's what um, a lot of these things are moving towards. So anyway, I was just showing this off. You guys can read the whole. Anyone can read the whole uh, um, blog here for what's going on. But there's there's just the the three main things that are that are being worked on. Wasi itself, which is a set of uh, specific interfaces. There's the component model, which that's pretty much landed. We have resources. We have handles. Um, and that's what I mentioned where all of these things landed and we're all going to like, this is one of the last big breaking things that there was landing before preview two inside of WASI. Um, and then, um, yeah, right here, this is the, this is the big thing about it being like the collection of interfaces. And so there's the CLI world, which has a bunch of like very important things like sockets and random and poll and IO, those kind of things you'd expect. And then an HTTP proxy. So these two things are kind of the big things that have to standardize. Um, before preview two that are almost there question mark i'm pretty sure they're there bailey can uh, drop any comments there for things that i am i am wrong on dates but um there's there's a couple important things right now um the rough date for when people are shooting for for um uh very close yeah perfect yeah so shoot so the the date that, that is being um that, that is being targeted right now is end of november beginning of december ish um, like I said, those can move. This is not anything official um, around the component uh, component one. Basically, Wasi Preview two being being stable. Uh, now, something really important, yeah. There and Bailey's calling that. We need two. There's the community needs two implementations for it to be considered like stable. And Wasm time is almost there. And then Jco, um, which is uh, the JavaScript uh, based um, based runtime as well. Those things have to be um, in place and and implemented. Um, and there's other people, like we've talked about before, Wasm Edge is trying to implement a lot of these things. So we're just making sure people have implementations in place uh, as a community. And um, Bailey linked the, the Jayco stuff. Someone should probably take notes because I am definitely not taking notes right now. Um, thanks. Thanks, David. Um, and so uh, the one key point that I wanted to, to I was talking to Bailey before I, I came and gave this information to make sure I was I was on track. And one key point that um, I don't think a lot of people have grokked, and I didn't totally crack myself is that um, we've called this before the island of stability. Preview 2 is an island of stability, and it's really a window. So those two those two uh, big like interfaces we talked about, which is was like the CLI world and the pro HTTP proxy world, are the things that must land for Preview 2 to do that. Anything else that builds on top of that, the basically stabilized ABI and those, those, inter and those kind of core interfaces can be like essentially added to the the preview two stuff so it's it's kind of like as if it were like in semver land it's like saying oh we're 1.0 so 1.1 1.2 1.3 might have new features but they're still all compatible with each other so it's really more of a window um, and that's why things like for the very initial launch wasi cloud which is something i think most of us are interested in are um are uh, going or it's not like included at that but that doesn't mean it's not going to be it just means it's a follow-on once we get to that preview two stability um so anyway, that's kind of the high level thing of where we're at. Um, what this means is that everyone will start being able to use these interfaces and be able to interop with each other. 
um, which is where we get this this kind of world that that we've been hoping for 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 a long time where um this is kind of what luke was alluding to with the whole like oh can a runtime class be used for this it's the idea of saying okay i have these interfaces now i can take this component and i can run it inside of you know like wasm edge over here i can run it inside of one of the run wasi things inside of kubernetes or i can run it in wasm cloud or i can and the idea is that these things stay portable across the shared interfaces and these shared interfaces are what i think are the most important and unlock the most things for us um, here at this at this early stage. So that's kind of a, where we're at, um, the high level. And I just wanted to kind of like starting from there, obviously Luke and Bailey can add and or correct anything I have said incorrect, but also like just hear from other people who are involved in the space right now, if there's anything they want to add about, oh, like, oh yeah, I'm working on this and this is what I'm excited about, all those kind of things. I just want to try to capture as much of that um, as possible coming into here. But like the idea is preview two will not be landed by KubeCon. So like, that's okay. That's we we're in the Kubernetes space. So everybody thinks things have to land by KubeCon. It is okay that it doesn't, in my opinion, um, and that it will be towards the end of November, beginning of December, where where this starts to stabilize, and then we really start to see that explosion of things because we're not going to have interfaces changing out from underneath us. So anyway, I'm not sure if anyone else wants to share other information they have around like the component model things they've experiences they've had either integrating with it or or uh, putting stuff up. I can share what we've done with Wasm Club, but I've been talking for a bit, so I don't want to keep talking. I want to make sure other people have a chance to talk. Anybody have any uh, comments, concerns, suggestions, feedback, or just ideas they want to toss out? Yeah, I'm very excited with Preview 2 getting stabilized. I think that there's a lot of, um, that's going to be the enabler for a lot of uh, further development and people start tinkering with it. Um, also, uh, I understand that uh, Wasm Time 14 is going to include HTTP uh, server support, right? Uh, I think it's server support and then Wasm, yeah, Wasm Time 14 is released. Wasm Time 15 is the current target for the preview to stabilization. So um, there's going to be a few more breaking changes between 14 to 15. Um, but the the whole reason 14 was released was to get out the latest stuff that's out there, including like resources and all of those different things um, I was mentioning so that they're there and landed. And for those of us who are on bleeding edge, which is most of us here, we can like start to play with those those things and kind of put it in. Bailey, did you want to clarify anything there? I noticed you came on off of. Yeah, um, that was great. Thank you, Taylor. I enjoy hearing somebody else go through all this stuff. Uh, the Bytecode Alliance community stream is tonight. Um, I think it's six o'clock my time. My No, seven o'clock my time. Uh, we brought it a little bit forward so we wouldn't intersect some uh, Pacific Coast uh, spooky time. Um, so we're going to be talking about uh, what's in Wasm Time 14, what's in Wasm Time 15, and a little bit more detail on that stream. But uh, like Taylor said, we're expecting Wasm Time 15 to point to uh, all upstream WebAssembly org WIT definitions. And so there's definitely a, a pretty big push to make sure that we're really happy with what we have in the proposal repos within the WebAssembly WASI repos. And uh, so you've got those those sets of, uh, have we, we've talked about WIT before, right? Um, okay, good. Uh, so with the, within that, those IDL uh, files, basically, that's where um, a lot of Wasm Time 15 is driving towards, yeah. And the WASI HTTP worked, a uh, ton of it landed for 14. I don't know how much more Pat will speak to uh, for 15, but um, if you look at the project board inside the Bicode Alliance GitHub org, there's also, you can see a lot of the active work uh, where we're tracking um, what we need to launch preview two, also known as uh, dot two, since it's a it, it's a stable release. Um, I just also want to note, so like from the Wasm Cloud side, we've been implementing this. Uh, I would highly recommend you go implement things right now if you, and I, I mean like right now, if you uh, are someone who's involved with runtimes at all. Um, we discovered like along the way, there were some like types of cases that weren't tested, which makes sense. Like this is new, right? So we discovered edge cases that because of the way we operate, we would run into. And I think that's gonna happen to a bunch of different people as, as we implement this. So I would highly recommend going and trying to just implement this. 
uh, making sure you have pulled, whether that's pulling in like Watson Time 14 and then doing the stuff there. But we, we've had to run into different things and, and suggest upstream fixes, which is the best way for this to happen. Because then we do, we, if we're all coming from a place where we're implementing it, the, those details really matter to, um, to everyone in the community. So that's just like where we've been at. Um, we ran into some problems with resources, some other things with like how some of the HTTP things were designed. And so like we've been working on trying to like upstream and have the conversations um, in the various repos for, for that to happen. So for anyone watching this now or later, I'd highly recommend if you're involved in this space to, to go start implementing and let people know what you run into um, because then we hit that stability place and it becomes harder to change some of those things. I mean, bug fix things are easy, but then there's some things where if it requires a breaking change, um, it means you have to break and then not everyone can be compatible, which is what is still currently the thing that's going on right now. Nobody's compatible. If anyone claims they're compatible right now, like we're all like working on slightly different things of the interface until we can get to that stability point. And then we have to work on stabilizing things like Wasi Cloud so we can all work on those interfaces and not like, previously defined ones. We've all had like Wasm Cloud has had our own interfaces that were close to that, that we've upstreamed things that we care about into Wasi Cloud. Other people in the community have as well. We want to make sure we're all on those things together once we land. So it's kind of that time right now to start looking at that. Um, yeah, and perfect. Yeah, that, that's perfect, Jorge. Like just hearing that about like what, what Docker is going to do. Those are the kinds of things we need to see and take advantage of um, as, as we come into this, because it's, it's kind of up to us as the community to make it a reality. So anyway, that's all that's all I have on the update here. I wasn't trying to make it a fancy talk. I was just trying to make sure like we had the time to chat about it before we got to KubeCon. And like I said, all on the same page. So that's where I, I don't know if anyone else has any thoughts or comments. I just gotta say plus one to your stability. <laughs> <laughs> it, it may be the most critical adoption factor of uh WebAssembly in you know, for uh, I would I would say enterprisey kind of like uh, don't want to get cut kind of users. It's really great work. It's so cool. It's so close, and so excited for it. Um. Anyway, as we're wrapping up here, David, I was just wondering. We had question marks on the agenda for next week, so I was wondering if we wanted to. Um, I think Bailey definitely has some connections to like some of the Whammer folks. If we want to get them to come present about like what Whammer is and its goals are um, as a runtime. Um, and we can also reach out to the Wazero folks. I think a couple of us have connections to the Wazero folks here. Um, have, you, have you already done Wasm Edge here? Uh, David, we did when I wasn't here, right? At some point before I joined. Yeah, it's earlier in the docs. Michael came in and, and talked about it. Yeah, Wasm Edge is on, uh, on the list too. We wanted to come have and talk about the component implementation and maybe that could be a little bit more important given how close the component model is. Um, yeah, they they had, uh, Michael had given an update uh, to the WASI subgroup, uh, which is the name of the, uh, basically like a working group uh, equivalent for the W3C WebAssembly community group. And uh it was really great, uh, but they had just started their component model work, and I would love an update of that. Uh, I thought that was really interesting. I think Whammer should be on the same track, too. Um, um, so, it, uh, you Who wants to reach out to Michael? And then, um, Bailey, do you mind pinging the Whammer folks, since I think you probably know them the best of the group here, and seeing if they'd be willing to present? about like the runtime and how it works and everything. Yeah, happy to. Um, at least for Waymer, I think they were um, they were definitely in the learning phase. We did, uh, Luke and I did several sessions with them, um, which was a blast. We got some really good material out of that that we could put in books and explainers and all that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know if their work is, is actually underway yet. They were definitely in the camp of needing uh, stability because they have a lot of enterprise users. Uh, so that's like one of their big focus points, but totally, yeah, I'll reach out to them. Um, would love to hear if they've gotten started on that yet. I mean, I'd be curious either way because I don't think many people, um, I don't, I don't think many people have like looked into many things outside of you know, like kind of like most of us are using Wasm time. So it'd be really interesting just to hear. I think from someone 
working like because we have wasm edge that does some of it and then whammer does some of these like really small use cases so i think it might be good to have even if um even if they're not all the way there because then we can hear what hear it from the horse's mouth essentially um, i'm happy to reach to michael if you want are we planning to meet at all uh next week like in person I want to. <laughs> um, does is anyone? I, I'm not sure what people have events on on the night of Wasm Day itself, but I was thinking like after Wasm Day would be a really fun way to maybe just get together. We can gather whoever else is interested too, and just go find somewhere to either get drinks at the minimum or at least go out to dinner or something like that. Sorry, I cannot make it this time. <laughs> um. I'll be around. Are you there, David, as well? Unfortunately, I will not be. Um, okay. Oddly, but uh, no, sorry. I, I do look forward to it another time, though. Um, why don't we? Uh, I will announce my intention to find people. <laughs> I will. I will <laughs> announce my intention to find people at Wasm Day. So just come find me, and we'll we'll get something together. I, I'd love to just chat with people. And then, yeah, Bailey linked the other thing I was thinking about, which is the WASM event on Sunday night. Um, that's gonna that's gonna be fun. That's just yeah. a bunch. It's literally a bunch of WASM, like all the WASM people, are like, hey, let's get together and have some fun, right, Bailey? Is that what that is, if I remember right? Well, Dan Phillips uh, ran the Chicago meetup, uh, the WASM Chicago meetup, and he he pinged and uh, came up with this really great idea of let's get all the WASM meetup organizers together in one place and then do like a, you know, an Uber meetup. Uh, and so Calvin here is, uh, runs, uh, is it Wine Wednesday, Wine Tuesdays uh, in Austin? WASM and Wasm Wine. WASM and Wine, okay, sorry, that's it. No, Austin uh, Tech, yeah. Awesome. And uh, and I, I run with Kyle, uh, the Triangle Wasm meetup uh, in, in North Carolina. So, um, yeah, it, it's a cool way to meet some of your community organizers, I think. Awesome. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun and I'm, I'm totally envious. Uh, there is no green in this, but uh, not much, uh, but it would turn green. Um, uh, so, hey, anything else we want to cover? I think we're at time. All right, going once, going twice. Uh, wonderful discussion. We have a couple of action items, and I thank you all so very much for your wonderful input. <laughs>